family of God, he's showing us that our father is not about religion. He wasn't about keeping the rules. I worked for you. I obeyed you. I lived in the house. And you didn't treat me the way you're treating him. And God's saying, it's not about religion. Do you get my heart? Do you understand how much I love you? Merry Christmas, everybody. We are celebrating the Anointed One, our Jesus who came to the earth to save us and to give us life. And then He rose from the dead to forever be our Lord. And praise God, we as a family, as families around the world, are getting together to celebrate Christmas. It's so exciting to be able to do this together today with you in your home as well. And I have my beautiful daughter, Brittany, with me as well to celebrate families this week. Merry Christmas, family. It's such a blessed day and we're so excited to be spending it with you. You know, I always think of the times that we have Christmas together as yes. a family. We know how much mom really makes it a big thing. She Definitely. puts so much effort into making Christmas a time of family. And celebrating as a family together. Yes, and we know that this is a time that we celebrate Jesus yes. and His birth, and that's central in our home. The most important part of it. Absolutely. And when you look at how the world has tried to commercialize mm. Christmas and make it about gifts and, and the tree and Jesus. everything, and there's nothing wrong with gifts and trees. Mm -hmm. But it's the fact that we must remember the reason for the yes. season. Yes. And that's our Jesus. And our Savior. Yes. And uh, think of when, you know, you could just get up and say, well, Merry Christmas and get on with the gifts <laughs> and everything. But as a family, we've always got around the communion. And the and, Word. And the Word. Yeah. Yes. And we start the day mm -hmm. with the good communion. Yes. That's the very first thing. Right since they were little, you know, they would run and see the trees, see the presents, <laughs> yes. and go and running. Whoa, presents! And then Always drawn back to communion first. Yes. And as a child, like running down to Christmas, to the presents, we would be so excited to get there and then yes. almost frustrated that we first had to do communion because you're so excited. Yeah. But growing up, you can see the meaning and the reason we That's did it right. that way. Because if you think about it, when Jesus was born, was to bring His body into the earth. Yes. Uh, he was coming as the Savior, but He needed a body because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So really the reason Jesus was born was to die. Yes. What an amazing concept yes. where we have different destinies in our lives. Our God's put us in the earth for a reason and purpose. His reason was to give His blood mm -hmm. so we could be saved. And, and so it's around that. that. Yeah, it's around that blood of Jesus, the yes. communion. And so even though it's not the time of his death and resurrection, we want to remember, remember why it. he did it. Yes. And you know, when you think about family, we you know very often we can get lost in the tradition of Christianity where it becomes like just about church and going to church. And yet God is not a religious God. He's not about religious tradi tradition and ritual. By definition, He's our Father. Yes, yeah, so He's more about relationship yeah. than religion. Exactly. He is a Father who loves. He has His Son, Jesus, that He loves us so much that He sent Jesus to die for us. So He's Father with Son and He's the Holy Spirit. So He's not a religious organization. He's a family and a unit and a community. Yes. And He loves us. That's important because God is love. love. That's his nature. That's who he is. And his desire, his greatest desire, is that we would know him as love. Yes, it was one of Jesus' prayers right. that he said we would know that the Father loves us as much as he loves Jesus. Oh, yeah. And, and that is, if we could get a hold of that, it would transform our lives. 
Watch this message about the Father's heart. It's going to bless you. We'll see you just now. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Jesus said, a certain man had two sons. Everybody say two sons. The younger one of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. I need to understand this is his inheritance. Now, as far as we understand custom, is that fathers usually leave an inheritance to their children. That's what he understood the custom to be. But surely the custom is that even though your father is going to leave something to you, you know it's at his death. Isn't that one of the definitions of inheritance? Is that your dad gets to enjoy what is his, even though it will be yours one day, at that moment it's still his. And that's why we call it a will, because a will is read after the death of a person. And then we receive our inheritance at the death of the person. Because technically that person no longer has any use for it. So it transfers ownership to someone else who can use it. You understand by the father being alive means he still can use it. But this brother came to his father and said, I'm aware that you have something in store for me. That one day when you die will be mine. I can just imagine the conversation, the father saying, yes. And so he says, well, can you give it to me now? Wow. Wow. But notice what he does. So he divided to them his livelihood. The father didn't argue with him. I can just imagine him looking at him thinking, Saul, you receive an inheritance when I'm dead. So in your mind, I'm dead already. <laughs> so he hands him his inheritance. But you notice it says here he divided to them. We'll find out later he has a second brother. It says here he had two sons. He didn't just give it to the one son then asked. He said, well, if that's the case, then let's just divide it right here. Verse 13. Not many days after, the son gathered all together, everything he had received, and then he journeyed to a far country, and there he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Prodigal means wasteful. Wasteful. He just burned through it very quickly. Verse 14, when he had spent all, everybody say all. all. He spent all. It means he didn't even tithe on what he got. He just spent it all. Spent all. There arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. So obviously there was no planning involved here. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. Now, you understand, under Jewish culture, they're not even supposed to own pigs. Hello. So this guy obviously is not Jewish, but he joined himself. Joined himself is a term for covenant connection. He made covenant with a Gentile. Covenant with a non-believer. Verse 16. That would be like you and me making covenant with the world. I'm going somewhere with it, so let's just work together. Verse 16. Now he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. No one gave him anything. So he was so hungry, but people weren't feeding him. He then used to eat the pig's food. That's you hitting rock bottom now. Verse 17. But when he came to himself. Everybody say came to himself. Now that tells me he was not in his right mind. This took a while. He hit rock bottom. 
Now, you know, sometimes we have to hit rock bottom before we come to our right mind. But I pray that doesn't have to happen. And he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he thinks the answer is he, he's going to have to go back to his father. But there's no way his father is going to take him back. Not after the way he disgraced him. And if he's disgraced him so badly, then maybe if he comes and just asks him for a job. Let me just be a slave. Because even the slaves, even the servants, get treated well in my father's house. Verse 20. He arose and he came to his father. But. Everybody say but. I love it when God intervenes in your life. But. When he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Everybody say compassion. And he ran and fell on his neck and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Oh, come on. You've got to get this picture. There's the son. He sees his son at a distance. He runs to his son. His son, before his father can even say, because he's expecting his father, what are you doing back? How dare you come here? How you got no right? You call me dead and now you want to come home? Do you understand what the neighbors have been saying about you? Do you know what everybody, you know what your grandmother has to say? Do you? Hello. He, he, the, the son thinks this is going to, so before his father can open his mouth, he says, dead, I've sinned. But I'm not coming as a son. I'm coming as a servant. And the father doesn't even answer him. He turns to the servants. And he begins to talk. He doesn't say, son, okay, nothing. He just immediately, he doesn't even acknowledge the son has even spoken. And he says to the servants, bring out the best robe. Put it on him and put a ring on his hands. Sandals on his feet. Those are all significant. Make note of robe, ring, sandals. And bring the fatted calf, yeah, kill it. And let us eat and be merry. In other words, let's party. For this, my son was dead. And he's alive again. He was lost and is found. And then began to be merry. Now his oldest son was in the field. So he's working. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what do these things mean? And he said to him, your brother's come. And because he's received him safe and sound, your father's killed a fatted calf. And so the oldest son said, hallelujah, praise God. And couldn't wait to go and meet him. No? What does he say? He was angry and would not go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I've been serving you. I never transgressed your commandments at any time. And yet you never gave me a younger goat that I make me merry with my friends. Now that word younger in the Greek there talks about scrawny. Scrawny. In other words, he gets the fatted calf and he's saying, you didn't even give me a scrawny goat. You get what he's saying. He's comparing this fatted calf. You didn't give me a calf. Never mind fatted. You didn't give me a young goat. You didn't give me a fat calf. You didn't give me a fat goat. 
You didn't give me, you didn't even give me a scorny goat. And yet you never gave me a younger goat that I make me merry with my friends. But as soon as the son of yours comes, the son of yours, not my brother, the son of yours, who's devoured your livelihood with harlots. Now how do you know that? that, that everyone thinks, they just assume that's what the brother did. You know, when you talk about the prodigal son, then you hear people say, hey, well, he slept with prostitutes. It doesn't say that. It just says he wasted the money. It was, the far, it was the brother that thought this about him. He's devoured your livelihood with harlots. He's, you kill a fatted calf for him. And he said to him, son, you're always with me. All that I have is yours. Was, you didn't even have to ask for the fatted calf. You could have had it. So you can imagine every day the, father, the son sees the fatted calf and he's thinking, man, I'd just love to eat some meat. And the father says, it was yours all the time. I don't want to get to heaven and find out I had things that my father thought was mine. And then upset everybody else, upset with others because they're getting. How come I didn't get? And the father says, it was yours anyway. <laughs> yeah. Verse 32. It was right. It was right. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and is found. Come on, give Jesus praise. He's showing us the heart of the Father. See, family of God, he's showing us that our Father is not about religion. He wasn't about keeping the rules. I worked for you. I obeyed you. I lived in the house. And you didn't treat me the way you're treating him. And God's saying, it's not about religion. Do you get my heart? Do you understand how much I love you? How much I love my children? And I believe that as fathers today, we can... Learn from our Heavenly Father. And not just as fathers, but as families. This is for all our families. You see, Jesus had something about Him that religious people got upset with. But tax collectors loved Him. Sinners loved Him. People couldn't wait to come to Him, to be around Him. Why? Why? Because he demonstrated the heart of the Father. He demonstrated the Father's heart. Join us this Christmas at the Bay Christian Family Church for an amazing time of celebrating our Savior Jesus. We will be celebrating Jesus with all our family through times of worship, song and dance. This is always such a special time of the year as we celebrate Jesus together with family and friends. We will also be having a special Christmas Eve service at the Bay. On this evening, we will once again be celebrating our Lord Jesus. And Alan Bagg will be sharing a special message for this season. Entrance will be free, but we encourage you to come early so you don't miss out. For any info, please contact us or visit us online. Join us at the Bay Christian Family Church as we see the New Year in in the powerful presence of our God. Three, two, one. Happy New Year! Every year, the Lord has faithfully shared a prophetic word for the year that lies ahead. And on this New Year's Eve, Alan Bagg will once again be encouraging and sharing God's amazing plans for us for the year ahead. So don't miss out on our New Year's Eve service taking place at 10 p.m. Entrance will be free and you are more than welcome to bring friends and family and see this New Year in in the powerful presence of our God. For any information, please contact us at allenbagministries.org. Family. My safest place in the natural realm should be my home. With messages like keys to enjoying a blessed home. Love is the power motivational force in the kingdom of God. 
be strong and courageous. It's not always about what you get out of the relationship. It's about what I am putting into the relationship. And our Father's heart. Never be afraid to approach God because He is a Father that loves. He's a Father that nurtures. He's a Father that guides and teaches. Powerful faith-building messages that will encourage and help you understand who you are and how to flourish. If the key ingredient in our home is love, that home will never fail. Get this powerful series on flash drive and with a few bonus messages that both Alan and Janine Back have taught over the years. Contact us here at Alan Back Ministries. Do you get that too? God loves you as much as God loves God. What? <laughs> Isn't that so an amazing powerful. revelation? And you, you think of that love that he has. God cannot love Jesus anymore. And we always think that somehow he's, he's, he's rationing his yeah, love towards us. us less. Yeah. No, love, you are the love of you, do not. And he, he is love. He gives us everything. That's it. And if we can get a hold of that, you know, it's, it's more than just understanding this from a father's perspective. Because I learned from that as I want to be a father to my children the way father's father to me. And I learned from him because that's how we learn. He says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And then the Bible tells us that we must be imitators of God. And we as fathers can learn a lot from that, but it's more than that. It's not just about the male genders who have had children. <laughs> it's for everybody yeah. uh, that we can all learn that love, whether you're a mother or a daughter or a son. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to know when the Bible does talk about sons, uh, it includes everybody because it's a relationship with a heavenly father. Yes, and I've definitely learned about the love of our father from the love you have shown in our home. Yeah. You, you displayed God and his love. And even though we had rules and we had discipline and we, there was order, we mm. still had love in our home yeah, from the, the father. You see the, the rules, it's not about the rules is what defined yes. us as a family. No, it's those the love guidelines. that defined it. Those are guidelines. And those guidelines are, you know, that, that, that's the difference. Sometimes people feel, feel rules restrict them. Yes. But rules are not there to restrict us. They to, to guide when we don't know any difference. <laughs> yes. You know, it's like, does the tra railway tracks, does that restrict the train? What does it make sure the train doesn't Goes get stuck? Goes in the right direction. Yes. And so if, if we look at it, because sometimes people focused on the rules, and that's what happened in the Old Testament. Mm. They became so focused on the laws, they lost their relationship that's with God. That's where the religion came in. That's all religion is. It's desperately trying to please this unpleasable <laughs> yes. person. No, God is pleased with faith. And faith is what? Just believing. Believe that God is. Believe He is a rewarder. Yes. Believe He loves you. And he wants to show you that love yes, freely. That's right. And he's putting it on the table saying, <laughs> here I am. I love you. Take it. <laughs> Just love me back. And that's, that's really our heart's desire is that everybody experiences that. I trust this message really inspired you to desire the love of the Father and to allow him to love you and that that love can manifest through you. So we've made this message available on our family pack along with all the other messages we're hearing this week and bonus messages that Janine and I have taught through the years around family relationships, fathers, mothers, as children, in the home, and just so many messages to help encourage us as families. So get a hold of yours today. It's really going to build your faith. You know, so many people are struggling out there and battling, and maybe they're listening to us and they feel like, you know, I wish I had family like Pastor Alan and Janine and Brittany and Michaela and Joshua experiencing. But that same grace is available and we have to just reach it by faith. Yes. Would you pray for the families out there and just let's, let's agree together that they experience the same love of God in their homes. Heavenly Father, we come before you now and we know that families have been attacked by the enemy. But we bind that now in the name of Jesus and we command yes. your blessing over these households. Yes. Your unity, your love floods those households mm. and you give them a place of protection, a place of love 
and a place where your presence is welcome. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. We believe that home is filled with the love of God. He loves you, family. He loves you with a passion. He loves you with the love that He shows Jesus. And that same love is in your home. And we believe that. We agree together on that. That's all we got time for today. We're going to get together again tomorrow around the Word of God. This is Brittany and Alan Bag reminding you Jesus is Lord. And life is a choice. Choose, Choose life. life. God bless you. Were they called to equip believers to flourish in their ministries? Alan and Janine Bag are the senior pastors of the Bay Christian Family Church, one church in many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us this weekend at the Bay Christian Family Church for some great times of worship in God's amazing presence, for faith-building messages from God's uncompromised Word, and for some great times of fellowship with the family of God. You can join us in the Helderberg at these times at Section 3 Gan Center on the corner of the N2 and Fabric Street in Somerset West. If you're in the Cape Town City Center, join us at these times in Salt River on the second floor at 97 Durham Avenue. If you're in the northern suburbs, you can join us at Durbanville Live at these times on the first floor of the Durbanville Conference Center found at 27 Wellington Road. If you would like to join us at Par Live, we're on the first floor of the Berlin Center on the corner of Optonhorst and Berlin Streets. You're also welcome to meet with our family in Claymont in the Claymont Community Hall on Main Road. People connecting with people. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format.